Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today for Cortex Services, sharing native WBD, Accelerate Your Deployments with Nerdio. With me today, I have Brian Barnes, the CTO of Cortex Services. He's going to walk us through this webinar. Here you are, Brian. Thanks for the introduction, Paul. I appreciate it. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Really excited to bring you this content in a, a new partnership that Cortex uh, is, uh, is aligned with, with a company called Nerdio. Um, they offer solutions both for the um, MSP as well as the uh, customer retail perspective uh, in the uh, Azure marketplace. So really excited to talk to you about it today and uh, really around what exists around uh, native WVD and some of the complexities during deployment and how Nerdio can really accelerate your deployment of Windows Virtual Desktop as well as the automation that enables you to manage your host pools in a much more efficient and uh, robust way. So let's just jump in. So a little bit of house cleaning uh, today. Um, hold on one second. So um, in a little bit of an introduction, so from a Cortex perspective, um, Cortex Services is a system integrator um, headquartered outside of Detroit. Uh, we do a worldwide deployments of Microsoft, Citrix, uh, and VMware technologies around a hybrid and cloud strategy. Uh, Cortex is um, a part of an Inc. 5000 um, uh, best and brightest, as well as a local Detroit best and brightest now for um, seven and, and I think uh, um, seven years on the national list and uh, eight or nine years on the local best and brightest list. So really excited to be a part of that, as well as holding the top level partnerships for all of our key uh, partners around uh, the kind of the um, WVD or VDI ecosystem. So really excited to continue those partnerships and even um, adopt new ones like Nerdio. Um, Cortec is a Microsoft Azure Expert MSP. It's a, um, a partnership that's kind of an elite few uh, across the globe, about 58 of us that um, hold that title, and it allows us to have uh, really deep expertise around consuming Microsoft Azure and administrating the different complexities around the public cloud, as well as alignment towards um, strategic partnerships for iGel and Citrix and customers or uh, partners like Nerdio as well. Uh, to align it to WVD enablement. So real quick as a recap around what is Windows Virtual Desktop, so we're kind of all um, starting from the same um, level playing field. So Microsoft released back in September a new Windows 10 experience for multi-session Win 10 that's only available in Microsoft Azure. It's optimized for Office 365 uh, Pro Plus as well as the ability for um, delivering both application delivery and desktop delivery from a single management plane. The beauty of Windows Virtual Desktop, it's a, a global PaaS service that allows you to broker connections to applications and desktops um, into Azure around the globe um, without third-party product that allows that connectivity to happen, um, as well as leveraging um, Microsoft native tool sets to be able to deliver a co cohesive strategy, not only around uh, virtual desktops, but uh, leveraging it for application delivery as well. Um, the nice thing is, is that um, instead of delivering these user experiences from um, a server-based OS, now that we can deliver it from Windows 10, you have the uh, more modern experience of Cortana Edge and a Microsoft App Storefront uh, that can be leveraged for better, better usage, uh, usage adoption as well as application compatibility. Some of the opportunities that uh, exist for migration to Windows Virtual Desktop is that if you're managing on-premise workloads today, whether um, it's from VMware, Citrix, or your RDS employment uh, deployments, that you can move to uh, Microsoft Azure and leverage WVD um, as part of a cost savings and a, re a management um, complexity reduction um, uh, for your IT administration staff. Um, it's a new Windows virtualiz virtualization capability that not only allows us to uh, lift and shift our Windows 7 images and 2012 R2 or 2016 images to Azure, but allows us now to consume Windows 10 as a public cloud resource, either as a single deployed desktop or multiple users to a single VM in a multi-session fashion. So that's really what's creating the buzz. Um, uh, around a lot of the Microsoft uh, ecosystem and its partners and enabling us to have some really great conversations around Windows Virtual Desktop. Some of the um, uh, differentiated benefits around Windows Virtual Desktop is cost of, 
uh, cost-effective compute and storage. So if you look at how you buy on-premise um, virtualization infrastructure today, you're buying at the top peak of what your expected use, uh, user resources would be, and then you're managing that top peak from a cost perspective in three and five year life cycles. The, the beauty of public cloud is that it's a consume and pay as you go model that allows you to pay for only what you use as users are um, accessing those resources in the public cloud. So whether the resources are up and then you're managing those resources with tools like auto scale, um, or, or um, automated deployments of scaling host pools up and down, that you're only paying for those resources in the, the way that the users are consuming them. And it's driving an economic benefit um, and cost reduction from an on-premise deployment um, and layered with different uh, funding apparat apparatuses like reserved instances or pay-as-you-go, it's driving down up to a 30% cost reduction against those on-premise environments. Um, another big savings of the Windows Virtual Desktop is that if you um, are using Citrix or VMware on-premise today, um, or even your RDS pools, it also um, uh, eliminates the need to procure and retain RDS CALs. So if you're paying for um, RDS as part of your Microsoft EA or leveraging some other uh, SPLA or SPLA agreement for your RDS CALs, leveraging multi-session Win10 or single-session Win10 in Azure, now alleviates that cost for the organization. Um, typically saving somewhere um, between $10 per user per month um, based upon how you, um, what your cost tiers are for the amount that you consume inside of your enterprise agreement. So um, right, off the, right off the bat, a RDS savings by moving to um, a multi-session or single session Win10 deployment in Azure. Um, this slide's nice because it kind of shows you where some of that cost savings is retained. So if we take a migration scenario of 1,000 users with 800 of those users running about 170 hours a month and 200 of those users running up to 400 hours per month, which is probably you know, close to a 12-hour workday for those 200 users, um, and then blending a Windows Server on-premise environment to Windows 10 multi-session and a Windows 10 single session to Windows 10 multi-session in WVD, you can see the multi-session piece of that um, carrying from left to right is a cost decrease of uh, 8,600, and then paying for your Azure consumption from a Linux rate perspective um, really drops into about um, uh, $5,650 of cost, and then the actual pay for uh, actual usage, um, um, 650, and then the management service for um, you know, leveraging your on-premise environments against what's offered now as a PaaS service and really no administration or upgrade as part of that service for $2,400. And then again, looking at that thousand users um, for RDS elimination, um, what would cost us $38,600 for on-prem cost um, would show more of a 65% savings over uh, a $13,300 per, um, per month cost for Windows Virtual Desktop. So again, using all the native um, cost models of that uh, specific migration scenario, you can see where some of our costs are being delineated from and the cost savings. Um, one of the things that exists in Windows Virtual Desktop and a big reason why we're talking today is the complexity that exists inside of a native WVD deployment. Um, what I did is a five-part um, series of what it takes as a step-by-step -step to deploy Windows Virtual Desktop natively results in about 219 manual steps with 34 customized PowerShell scripts to get WVD to a user consumable resource. Um, as you can see, when you're dealing with that many manual steps, that many um, touch points or hand-on experiences for customizing PowerShell scripts, you can see it increases the complexity. It also increases the rate of error that happens with that much manual work, as well as driving more inconsistency across your Windows Virtual Desktop environment. Um, that really will equal into higher administration costs, as well as complexity with onboarding users. Um, so this slide is a real world example of uh, what it takes to get a native WVD instance off the ground from um, a non-automated resource, as well as a uh, ability to um, follow guides and be able to do that successfully with a moderate um, scripting uh, capability. So as you can see with native WVD um, in the first release of it, there's a lot of complexity that's, that sits there 
as well as a lot of things that are changing that require um, some pretty high level skill set to get off the ground and then to really maintain and manage as you get um, WVD more at, at a mature rate. So as we look at um, what Nerdio offers and what the product called Nerdio Manager for WVD is, is it really allows us to um, integrate into the Azure Marketplace for a automated deployment method for Windows Virtual Desktops. Um, it's really a, a new product that's probably close to a month um, out of the gate in terms of being a consumable Azure Place product, um, a marketplace product that uh, customers can consume. This technology was typically reserved for managed service providers and um, uh, an MSP model that uh, managed services use to automate um, uh, users into Azure. Um, Nerdio has been around for quite a while, especially in the MSP circles. And so now they're bringing this um, offering to the customer to be able to consume inside of Azure uh, Marketplace there. So it's really for uh, enterprise IT pros um, who are looking to deploy and manage um, larger WVD environments, um, you know, 500 plus users. Um, typically from a cost perspective, it's one of the lower costs options out there for um, a WVD management add-on as well as it, it provides an intuitive and powerful UI that doesn't exist in native WVD today, um, and really kind of brings all of the customized scripting into a overall management GUI and very fast deployment. Um, they have some you know, unique IP when it comes to automation, as well as auto scaling your desktop and host pools up and down based upon user need, um, as well as bridging into session management and performance monitoring. So not only does Nerdio help accelerate the automation um, of Windows Virtual Desktop deployments, but it's also adding um, additional session management and performance monitoring on top of that for um, increased uh, capability. The three big um, benefits for Nerdio Manager obviously is the oper oper operationalizing um, the overall WVD deployment um, by providing that intuitive UI as well as a very easy way to consume it, right? So from, you know, as we look at different platforms of what it takes to install management servers on premise or, you know, manually standing up Active Directory uh, environments um, or facilitating that in Azure, um, Nerdio offers a way for us to automate all those specific pieces needed for WVD in a single 20 minute or less deployment model uh, that will get us off the ground very quick and efficiently. Um, it also helps to reduce the Azure consumption costs. There's multiple different ways a customer can consume Azure. One of those is, um, you know, leveraging um, a pay-as-you-go subscription. So think about, you know, going to Microsoft.com, uh, going to Azure and putting a credit card in there and that credit card being billed for the services that you consume. Um, that's one way. Another way is you can consume that from within an organization's enterprise agreement. So um, as they structure different Azure costs inside of EAs, um, you can consume that based upon the rates that the company negotiates, or you can leverage um, third-party uh, providers, um, which are referred to as CSPs, for not only um, uh, uh, discounts on consumption, but also the automation that those partners bring to you as part of the overall Azure uh, management methodology. Um, the way that Nerdio introduces cost reduction is having IP that really auto scales the uh, environment up and down based upon users' needs or shifts, as well as the speed to bring new host, pe host pools up in Windows Virtual Desktop uh, and being able to automate all of the specific tasks during those deployments. Um, they're also um, reducing um, Azure compute and storage costs up to 75%. Um, from an, uh, a deployment hours um, and minutes from weeks of time that it would take to do uh, in previous lifetimes. So from that perspective, it's, it's, it's a really good tool that allows us to get um, minimal vial product uh, much quicker than we typically would be able to do natively within Microsoft, as well as reinforcing existing security principles and policies that exist today. So one of the things that plagues a lot of public cloud deploy deployments is inconsistency as well as um, you know, introducing new services that might not fully be understood. So by creating a common deployment methodology, as well as compliance requirements that exist, as well as a foundational approach to Azure, uh, we can reinforce uh, using Nerdio a, that consistency model of deployment um, and leveraging an all paths service for brokering those users to our application and desktop pools. Um, definitely, if you look at how desktops and laptops are being used around the world today, 
and bringing that data into a centrally controlled area um, and not being required to be moving around with the devices anymore as a huge um, security posture uh, gain at that perspective. So um, digging a little bit into the deployment architecture. So Nerdio for Manager um, uh, for WVD is a standalone Azure application. Um, it's not multi-tenant management services. Um, it's a single um, platform that is deployed within your Azure subscription and then managed either from a customer or partner perspective uh, to own the host pool, user assignment, and application integration uh, consistency. Uh, it's deployed into um, a customer's own Azure subscription. Um, it's uh, not an Azure managed application. Um, Nerdio has no access inside um, of the uh, actual subscription uh, in terms of ongoing um, management of those host pools and desktops. It truly is an automation capability that accelerates deployment. And it's deployed and built through the Azure Marketplace. So if you consume Nerdio Manager for WVD as, as the marketplace item, um, the corporation or organization is going to be billed based upon the usage of that per month, um, as well as being able to drive um, you know, future roadmap operalization oper um, characteristics of that uh, deployment uh, type. So really excited to um, really kind of show you some of that today as well as um, kind of giving you a brief introduction to what the uh, deployment architecture looks like. So as you can see, starting in the middle, um, Nerdio is self-contained inside the Azure Marketplace. Uh, during a um, Azure enablement and configuration period um, that you um, start through a wizard-driven GUI interface, uh, it starts that second step of deployment uh, to the Azure subscription and integrates uh, and deploys Nerdio Manager for WVD um, around all of the IP that consists, consists inside that subscription. Um, it automates the deployment of uh, file shares as well as the integration for uh, the global admin rights and service principles needed for, uh, uh, for that deployment. Uh, it integrates in with either a um, Active Directory server that's a part of that subscription um, or Azure Active Directory uh, directory services, um, increasing uh, an Azure AD capability there as well. So once we're able to do that, um, uh, the uh, publishing of that Nerdio uh, capability inside that subscription is completed, as well as um, the report metering inf information from the subscription back centrally to Nerdio and then back to the customer for billing. So you can see as, as new customers are stood up that it's taking that marketplace enablement and really building out a strategy of maintaining this capability outside of the subscription as nothing's really deployed inside the dis, uh, inside the subscription to be managed. Some of the unique features and capabilities of Nerdio uh, when it comes to uh, Windows Virtual Desktop is obviously a guided deployment that's uh, simple and automated. Um, I showed you earlier that um, you know a couple hundred steps to get Nerdio off the ground with a lot of PowerShell um, to be uh, you know enacted as part of that deployment um, process um, is really eliminated. So there's really no PowerShell that you're doing as part of the guided deployment. Um, it's really about a, a six or seven step process. And there's a few deployment guides that exist that show you what, what's needed prior to the deployment start. Um, so really simple and easy. Um, for the most part, it's about a five minute process that you execute. And it's about another 15 minutes or so for all of the backend automation to do its work and to be ready to start to consume uh, Windows Virtual Desktop with your image and applications. Um, we also have a unified desktop image creation and management process that exists within Nerdio Manager for uh, WVD. Um, some of the complexity that exists for ongoing image and application management uh, with the native experience is somewhat complex um, and not too intuitive from an administration or a user perspective. So it increases the capability and sp um, uh, speed to market for uh, increasing uh, image changes in applications. Um, it also enables advanced scheduling and event-based auto-scaling. So whether you know you have a peak shift starting at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. Um, and then you you can automate those host pools down at the end of the day, or minimize how much VMs you're standing up as part of your initial deployment, um, as well as leveraging uh, the capability of scaling into other VMs as they're needed and automating that workload up based upon time of day. So uh, event-based scheduling and auto-scaling is a, is a key important part of cost reduction. 
as well as um, picking a few more here, FS Logics integration um, and um, built-in profile management uh, and automation for FS Logic. So there's a lot of great stuff that's happening both from a roadmap perspective as well as current capability around FS Logics. Um, and from that perspective, it's a key reason why Microsoft acquired it um, to give the user experience um, to a point where Office 365 is usable in, in a, in a um, in a virtual session uh, like on-premise VDI or in Azure VDI, um, you really, from an office perspective, you couldn't get too usable without it. So big important part to automate FS Logics as part of that deployment, as well as another critical one is role-based WVD tenant management. Um, from that perspective, um, being able to manage the tenant and subscription as part of the WVD deployment for WVD specifically is, is really critical. Um, as well as um, being able to have an audit trail and trackable tasks uh, for completion. So um, building on a lot of capabilities uh, on top of WVD and, and Nerdio is really there to, to really drive some of that forward. Uh, some of the differentiation that happens between um, other uh, Windows Virtual Desktop um, uh, solutions out there. Um, so it's um, Nerdio claims to be the only WVD native enterprise grade solution that addresses data re uh, residency as well as compliance and security requirements can be layered on top of existing window virtual uh, desktop deployments and be non-disruptive uh, in, in that. So if you have a small or moderate sized Windows virtual desktop deployment today, um, you can put Ner Nerdio very easily on top of that deployment uh, without too much disruption. Um, or start with Nerdio um, right off the, uh, out of the gate to increase acceleration uh, for adoption. Um, Nerdio claims to also have zero lock-in, right? So um, you can remove the application without impact or change to the WVD infrastructure, uh, as well as configurations, both from a user and an infrastructure perspective. Um, a lot of organizations are leveraging Nerdio to help with the automation, uh, the stand-up and the management out of the gate, um, but might choose to remove Nerdio um, uh, uh, you know, after the fact of deployment. However, most of our experiences, once they uh, see the power of it, uh, they definitely want to keep it because it adds so much capability there. Uh, it's part of an Azure Marketplace deployment and billing, no procurement process, no POs, um, nothing to do from that perspective. So as if you have any experience uh, deploying out of the Azure Marketplace, uh, you can see how easy that is based upon how you manage your tenants and subscriptions with Microsoft Azure. Um, we talked a little bit about auto scaling and uh, schedule and event driven uh, auto scaling. Um, it helps with desktop image creation and import management, as well as lowering the cost of solutions and providing named and concurrent user price models. Um, so some of the different uh, Windows Virtual Desktop differentiates and that, that's happening out there uh, in the field with the, the um, other solutions. Um, some of the roadmap features that Nerdio has on the horizon. So um, they're working uh, really aggressively on cost estimation and auto scaling algorithms to create more of a um, an AI approach to auto scaling, right? So at, over time, um, having a feel for when user peaks are happening over the course of a month, uh, we can use that um, learned behavior to auto scale the environment based upon past statistics. So being able to auto scale based upon ag algorithms as well as estimating costs based upon how Azure's consumed overall. Another piece that's um, on the roadmap is out of the gate NetApp files integration. So um, there's some really big benefits for leveraging Azure NetApp file services as part of your FS Logics deployment and data um, um, retention across different multiple subscriptions. Um, NetApp's been all out there for a long time on their uh, SIFS file management as well as a NAS um, type of experience. Um, bringing that service into Azure has a lot of benefit um, uh, to actually use that for your FS Logics capability, but also your uh, tiering your different storage needs across Azure. Um, one of the things that does introduce is some increased costs there. Um, we're seeing more and more customers do it because of the capability um, over and above Azure file services. Um, they're also working on endpoint management as well as printer management integration uh, for Nerdio Manager for WVD. So four different roadmap things that they're working on. And lastly, I wanted to um, show some of the Microsoft-based offers that exist out there as part of a native um, WVD um, uh, experience, as well as some of the um, Lighthouse partners that exist in the partner ecosystem to help with your WVD deployment. 
So one of the things that Cortec can provide and offer is a funding assistance for a Windows virtual desktop deployment up to $20,000. So um, to, um, uh, to get this funding, um, a Microsoft has to nominate a partner to be the service partner to do Windows virtual desktop uh, for the organization. And basically it's using Cortec and our capability to um, provide the services needed and it's um, at times zero cost to the customer. So if you have um, a pilot that you're looking to do with Windows Virtual Desktop and looking to do a minimum of 25 users for three months um, over the course of proving that out, we can get you $20,000 to be able to do that with, for, with Microsoft funds. If you layer on the uh, ability for um, looking at reference architecture design or migration, uh, we can get up uh, that funding amount up to $35,000, especially if we look at different Azure funding mechanisms to be able to provide you for Windows Virtual Desktop. Microsoft is also offering um, uh, till the end of June Azure credits for Windows Virtual Desktop prove out and pilots up to $15,000 um, and then free three month access of the Lighthouse partners for Lakeside, Nerdio, Lakewoodware and um, CloudJumper. So um, being able to leverage those um, products on the Lakeside front um, Cortec is also a platinum partner. Uh, they offer assessment capabilities for looking at your desktop and application environments on premise and then estimating that um, from a cloud capability, the Azure cost of what that desktop and application service would look like uh, as you consume it as an Azure service, um, as well as leveraging Nerdio for your deployment needs um, and host pool management. And then um, Cloud Jumper is a competitive uh, solution out there for Nerdio that does. A very similar um, capability for um, WVD standup, as well as leveraging a product of Liquidware for migration of profiles uh, from your on-premise application and desktop environments uh, to Microsoft Azure. So uh, Cortec is currently a par partner with all four of these Lighthouse partners and can really provide a lot of value and differentiation about when to leverage these tools at the right time to be able to provide a lot of capability. So if you um, are interested in that, uh, please reach out to uh, Cortec, um, both from a, um, uh, uh, a phone or email perspective at inquiry at cortec.com um, or leveraging um, the uh, communication established with this meeting invite uh, to brian.barnes at cortec.com or paula.gwyn at cortec.com. So really excited to talk to you, to provide some demos and some assistance with Windows Virtual Desktop, as well as showing you the power of Nerdio Windows Virtual Desktop Manager. So. Um, Really excited to uh, continue that conversation and uh, look forward to reaching out. So, um, Paula, I'll kick it back to you for any questions and answers that might come up. Great. Well, thank you for that, Brian. I know we wanted to keep these conversations to a very uh, tight 25 minutes, and we've gone a couple minutes over. So I'm going to uh, wave on the questions, if that's okay with everybody. If you have any additional ones, put them in the chat window, and we will get those out. You will receive an email that will have this presentation plus um, the answers to the questions that we have here, as well as um, information to contact back if you're interested in any of these types of Cortec offers or any other technology questions in general. Uh, with that, I wanted to make you aware that we will be hosting an additional session next week on the 21st of April. We will be spotlighting Arctic Wolf for security um, operation centers. And our CISO, Jim Hunter from Cortex Services, will be hosting that event. So look forward to seeing you all at that one as well. In between, feel free to reach out to us through inquiry at cortex.com or directly to Brian or I. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone.